be your fucking wild, fucked up self, you know? Because we all are a little bit, you know, from s some perspective. From some perspective, some other perspective is fucked up. You know, it's just naturally true. We don't all understand each other, and that's okay. That's fucking okay, you know? Alright. Oh, man. Some wild things have been happening to me lately. Um, so the title of this video is going to be something like Desire, the Anti-Enlightenment Juice. Um, so this video is going to kind of have some a little bit of overlap with another video that's going to come out around the same time, which will be about my five MEO DMT ceremonies that I experienced with a group of individuals. But this video is going to talk about kind of the the aftershock of the experience, I guess, the after waves of the experience, whereas the other video is going to be more about the how I experienced the effects and how I took in the medicine, the medicinal qualities of the ceremony, the circumstance, and the medicine. So, um, here's the thing, guys. This, this molecule is not something to be messed with. Um, you know, really, really got to be respectful with it and very, you know, true to yourself, you know, during the times that you're considering doing this because, um, it can really shake your life and your ego and your, your structures of meaning and, um, you know, your conditioning. 5-MeO, DMT in general, some other substances have the possibility to truly rip you apart. Everything that you know about you yourself, there, there's a potential for you to get ripped apart and, um, you know, depending on how well you let that go, the conditioning, the yourself, you know, it'll, it changes the experience, right? So, um, it's highly indivi individualized, um, but there is a common theme to it, and I, I'll explain more about the theme of DMT in the other video, so by all means, go check it out. Uh, so this is what happened to me, guys. I, I've, I've been, you know, so I, during the experience, I did have to surrender, right? I had to surrender to the loss of my ego and to the loss of all of the conditioning that I've been conditioned into. And in doing so, oh man, absolutely beautiful. You know, it's, it's, the result is just, you know, you come back from what feels like death in a way. And the result is, I'm so thankful to be alive to, to me. That, that's what my kind of result was. But the shattering and the shattering of conditioning and the shattering of my structures of meaning for my life and my ego even if, or after the first time of my DMT trip you know i was i became kind of afraid of death <laughs> and this time i also have had feelings of like wow i feel like the veil of life and death is so thin and i i'm you know semi-concerned about the well-being of my life and my ego um and in being in this state of being concerned about this being who i am um because you know honestly i could surrender I, I honestly feel like i could ascend in a way and i don't it's scary honestly like i feel really close to being able to just go out of my body and say bye and the, the experience of DMT kind of helped show me how to surrender to the forces of consciousness, I guess, you know, and in my entire body and its potential energy. Um, but through the process of that, you know, my ego was shattered and I learned something. Um, I... Honestly, there was this one time, all right, it was after the weekend, it was two days of, of experiences, and then on Sunday we came back, no experiences, but um, came back from the retreat center, and um, I was laying on the couch, and I was going to sleep, and I had this extremely vivid vision and channeling of communication between what felt like to me another entity and their family, inviting my soul into their new being and they were saying i saw visions of these people it was it was literally humanoids on a different planet very similar to humans but a little weird quirkinesses to their bone structures 
and um, uh, it was a female too. I've been exploring my female energies. I've been exploring my female energies, and I guess I felt like I could resonate with a female or something like that. And um, literally, words came into my being, and it's it was like the father figure guiding me into this other body, saying, "Hey, if you want to cross over right now, this is the time to do it." And truly, maybe influenced from you know the DMT kind of feelings of ego death. I started, I don't know, maybe it was reactivating within me, and um, I felt like within moments I was about to die and just be fleeted from my being. Um, and I believe a lot of these feelings um, have to do with practicing the essence of surrendering to the nature of the body and the nature of our potential energy. Um, I've been working on fully embodying everything within me so I can make use of it. You know, it's a logical thing. Like, hey, if I can make use of my entire body's energy, then I'd be a more powerful being, right? It's just logical. And um, But I've, I feel like I'm coming to a point of realization where, like a yogi, you know, if you can make use of your whole body, if you can direct your whole energy, if you can direct all of your energy, you're also able to let it all go you know if you have the ability to impact your energy and maintain it if you have the conscious ability to direct it it seems like you can also have the conscious ability to direct it right out of your body and i feel like i've been getting close to that and i really believe that's possible there's stories of monks and yogis you know being attached to this life by one desire and this is where the title comes in all right um Desire, the anti-enlightenment juice, doesn't have to be seen as a bad thing. You know, we this psychedelic wave of thinking is kind of overflown on the idea that the ego is bad. And yeah, look, if you want to be enlightened, you gotta let go of your body, you gotta let go of your ego. You know, if you want to ascend out of your body, you gotta you have to transform your consciousness from an egotistical self-oriented perspective to a more wholesome universal perspective however i felt like i was so close to death i mean my heart was rushing and like my body was phasing out of existence it, like my conscious center was like phasing out of my body and this father figure was like of the alien world or whatever was saying um Hey, if you want to trance over, this is this is like winning the lottery, and and uh, one of the biggest thing that stopped me was my ego, um, because I didn't want to go. I did not want to go. Um, a beautiful piece of advice that I got before going into the um, five meo experiences was that my ego is going to protect me. Um, somebody told me that, and it just really hit home, and I realized. You know what, that's true. Because there's something weird with the medicine. If With this kind of medicine, if you clench, if you latch, latch on to your ego or your conditioning, you don't go as deep. It's, it, well, maybe you don't go, you, you go deep, but you might not, um, the ego in some way, I don't fully understand this, obviously. I don't know if anybody does at this point, but during the experience, you can kind of, your ego can protect you in such a way where it can prevent you from being consciously aware of what's happening because the man the dmt oh my god really far out stuff just you know blows you apart and i do feel like the ego it has a job to protect us i mean when you think of it in a more physical natural sense you know you need to know a tiger is a tiger so you can not walk up to its fucking clenching jaws right right you know and you can eat fruit because you know it's a fruit you know that's the job of identification that's the job of separation in a way you know um and i am currently feeling and noticing that the ego is beautiful if we if we want to survive if we want to maintain our presence on this planet we need to have some sort of reason i mean that's really what it is we have to have some sort of reason to be here otherwise soul is just gonna fleet it's just gonna go because there's no reason it's just gonna be soul, you know. If it, if it, if the soul that which is in, in us, if it doesn't have any reason to be expressed, then it's gonna go. It's just you know. So, 
I've realized and started to embody this kind of confidence that, okay, you know, the, this my ego's all right. I can allow that to exist and really allow my, these weird quirky things about my personality, I can really play with that shit. You know, I, I, I'm still connected to like universal love, unconditional love, love and, and I'm still connected to the ability to release attachments within myself um, and provide myself with a wholesome self-love. Um, but I've just noticed that the further I get, the more powerful I get with just embracing everything as okay and everything as perfect and everything as, as love and having this feeling that there's no need to even, there's no need to experience anything because I can do it myself within myself, right? That's like the state of enlightenment is you can experience anything within yourself at any time you want. Your pure being, complete being. I've, I, with that, I've, I just come to notice and feel like I was getting so close to death. Um, but over the past few days, again, I've been embodying or allowing my ego to play a little bit more and really find reason to survive and stay alive. Um, I will share personally, <laughs> for some reason, my thing, I guess, is to sh share love with women for some reason. Um, I, I do kind of feel like I want to have a family and I want to live a long life and I want to experience the whole experience of being a human and um, I really want to share my abilities, my you know, I want to share this human body. Like, fuck, I got so much potential. I want to, I want to use it. Um, and <clears throat> so desire, the anti-enlightenment juice, it's just, it doesn't even have to be seen as a bad thing. It's, it's something that which we use to maintain our balance in this humanoid form or whatever physical form. We can maintain our presence here by creating reason and desire and you know <clears throat> to reflect upon all the yogis talking about enlightenment um you know we say we pr we look up to those guys the the spiritual te teachers and masters and they say you know to reach enlightenment i don't know what the fuck they say and like desire is not the answer for enlightenment you know ascension you don't need you don't want desire to be to ascend and yeah that makes fucking sense but but here's the thing but if you want to not ascend, because I don't want to ascend right now, I'll be honest, man, I felt like I was fucking close. And I don't want to ascend right now. And that's just my being. And, um, you know, it does not have to be seen as a bad thing. Desire, you know, we look up, what I'm trying to say is we look up to the yogis as if they're godly, right? And sure, they're more godly than many people, perhaps. They're more in tune with the godly forces. But they're still in this life. They're still desiring something as well. Um, and yeah, you know, there's this really, really beautiful, just beautiful, but intense and weird and strange and terrifying and what the fuck balance that is going on in our planet, in, in every one of us, you know, and the more conscious you become of it, the more wild and intense it is within the experience of every now. And, but, with all that being said, I just want to say, I just want to share that I have experienced pure, pure self-love to such a full degree. And that brought me to a point where I felt like I didn't need anything. And that brought me to a point where damn near spirits or something were encouraging me to leave my body. And if it wasn't for my ego, and if it wasn't for my desires... I may have shown up dead on the couch to my housemates and like, holy shit, man, you know, I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> um, I've, I, with, you know, the more I embody my desires too, the more I have this confidence of like, fuck yeah, dude, I'm going to live long. I'm going to live long. I want to live long. Let's fucking do this. Um, it's put a certain kind of power into, in me that just is like, like, fuck all this judgment, you know? I I really felt like I could have died. And what kept me alive was my desire, my ego, my unique personality. And I went and played out in public, played guitar out in public today. And I noticed how much that realization has helped me be myself. You know? Because, like, fuck it. If these, if me being myself is helping me stay alive, then fuck all of you and your fucking judgment. Because... 
It's what's keeping me alive, you know? That's what I feel. <sighs> and I really, really, you know? You can't lie with that, you know? I'm not that good of a fucking actor. I kind of wish I could be, but... You know, I'm allowing this to be within me, you know? So it's... This is the truth that I feel, and... You know, fuck all that judgment, man. You deserve to be you. You know? And if you can find that ability to connect with your own self-love and still <laughs> be able to separate and be your fucking wild, fucked up self, you know? Because we all are a little bit, you know, from s some perspective. From some perspective, some other perspective is fucked up. You know, it's just naturally true. We don't all understand each other, and that's okay. That's fucking okay, you know? But, oh, man. <sighs> like, I just connected with my desire to stay alive to such a degree, and it helped me play more magically, and guitar in particular, and... Oh my god, just fuck, you know, I want to fuck, you know, I want to make love, I want to share love in all the ways that I can, and, and it's really starting to show in the guitar playing and in all of my creative expressions. So I perhaps encourage you, just, you know, it's, yes, the yogis say to be enlightened, to ascend, you've got to let go of your desires, you've got to let go of your ego. But look, bro, it's not everybody's time to be ascended. All right, y'all already know what I was going to say, right? My, my camera just shuts off after like 16 to 18 minutes randomly. It does not have a set time. Um, but yeah, man, everybody's here to be here if we want to be here. And um, just the main message, man, let yourself be. Let yourself be. Love yourself, right? And, um, yeah, I didn't really have much else to say at that point. Um, except just to love everything you can love, like these soft, soft leaves. Not really that soft, but they're perfectly soft. All right. Mmm, smells good. Um, yeah, if you liked the video, hit that thumbs up kind of shit, all the blah blah blahs. Um, do what you gotta do. Much love. Thank you. You know, you already, you already, you already know. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>